Greetings everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being part of this family. God is good. I hope you are smiling. We keep shining in the name of Jesus. In this message, I want to share what to do when nothing happens. It happens that after you've prayed and sought the Lord, you've done all you can and nothing happens. It's like God is silent. What do you do when that happens? The Bible, the word of God has everything. And this is why we dig into what God says. And when a situation like that happens, what is it that you have to do, you as a child of God? Where do you run to? And what you do in that case is go back to your knees. Something great happens when you go on your knees. And you're not kneeling to any other God, but this supreme one of Israel, the one who is faithful, who is able and he can put his supernatural power on your natural and things turn around for your good. This is the God I'm talking about. So you go back to your knees. When you are on your knees, supernatural things happen in the realm of the spirit. And there's no way that you can kneel down to Jehovah. When you kneel down, it's humility. It shows that you have humbled yourself before the Lord. Pride checks out. And pride says, I don't bow down to anyone. I don't listen to any other advice. I'm my own God. That's what pride does. That's what pride says. Pride has a voice. And that voice is arrogant. The voice of pride takes you nowhere. That's why Proverbs talks about pride comes before a fall. You will see any trace of pride in anyone. The end is downfall. The end is exposure or shame why because they feel they are their own god they are not able to humble themselves before the lord even when it's clear that something is wrong they are not able to go back to the lord and say i don't know what is happening please check this situation out for me is there anything that i'm not doing right am i praying right do something on your part and god will do the rest so the one thing that you do when nothing happens, after you've done all you can, you go back to the drawing board. Our spiritual drawing board is our knees, going into that prayer room. And I'm talking about you going down on your knees because that is showing humility, showing submission, showing God that he is supreme and you look up and say, God, lift me up. And he lifts those who humble themselves. What happens when you go on your knees? Something comes on you. Supernatural hand of God helps you to humble yourself. People who repent don't just repent unless the Holy Spirit convicts them. So for you to find yourself on your knees, bowing before the Father, worshiping him, saying more of you, Lord, take all of me and give me more of you. So when you go on your knees, the Holy Spirit begins to reveal great and mighty things. He lifts the meek. The kingdom of God is for those who humble themselves because then you can know the mind of Christ. The enemy was thrown from heaven down to earth and is not going to return there anymore. He knows he cannot go there and do skimmy, skimmy things. Not anymore. He has lost the battle. Why? Because of pride. You have seen men in homes who are so proud. They cannot say sorry. If you are with someone like that and you are in a relationship, just run. Men who cannot say sorry or even women who cannot say sorry. Anyone who cannot see their wrongs, there's a trace of pride in that person. That's why the spiritual world is like close to such a person. Because nothing is revealed to such a person. You are siding with the enemy. Until you go down on your knees and humble yourself and say, Lord, heal my land. Here I am. What is happening? Even if you know that you have not done anything wrong, go back to that drawing board. Go back to your knees and ask the Lord to pour out his supernatural power upon your natural. There are so many things that we cannot know about ourselves until the Holy Spirit reveals them to us. When nothing happens, even when you have prayed and prayed, it's not time to say, I'll wait on God's timing 
and do nothing. In your waiting, these are the things you do. I've shared many of them. This is one of them. And God now starts to clothe you with power. His supernatural power comes upon you. And if there's any energy, any negative energy that is sucking your energy, your good energy from praying, now you become prayerless. You're, you are praying, but you are not carrying power on that prayer altar. That is another thing. When you humble yourself, God clothes you with power. Hallelujah. He puts it on you. And now you pray with so much power and things begin to happen. When you humble yourself, there's no way you can come back up there without transformation, without your breakthrough. When you go on your knees, and this is not done only once, you can do it until you hear God speak. When he tells you what it is, you have to be obedient to the voice of the Lord. Because when he comes to speak, he leads you into that profitable path. So you start to search. You start to check. Check your life. Why is power being sucked from me? Who is sucking my energy? Who is taking all that is good within me? Because if you are worried, there's no way you can pray. If you are always dwelling on the negative, there's no way you can pray. Your prayers won't be effective. If you are that person that is surrounded by all negative people, negative friends, and the whole time you hear this, you hear that, you cry. Maybe someone was gossiping about your life and you feel hurt. Or even people coming directly and telling you, all kinds of negative things and you hear them, your spirit is crushed. All that is what may be sucking the power of God from you because worry and faith cannot be in one place. Fear and faith cannot be in one place. As you go on your knees, you surrender everything and you ask the Lord to help you. As you search, you ask questions. You ask yourself questions. And the Holy Spirit is going to help you answer them. He will point to where the problem is. It's not all the time we pray and pray and we leave it to God. It's good to do that. But you cannot leave everything to God. There's a responsibility on your part. And that responsibility is to do what I'm saying here. This will be very helpful. What to do when nothing happens? Remember the story of Lazarus? How that situation was delayed, Jesus delayed on purpose in John 11 verse 43 to 45. He delayed on purpose. And when you pray and nothing happens, sometimes it's God delaying things for your sake. And it doesn't mean denial. So it's delayed to move things in place or for himself to take the glory. And while you are waiting, many things may happen. That's why you have to be on your knees. You have to humble yourself all the time and ask for God to help you all the time. Let the Holy Spirit be involved. Jesus appeared. The situation changed. That which was dead came back to life. That's what you want. Is the Holy Spirit involved? Are you using the word of God and denying the power? Do you realize that the word of God without the Holy Spirit is nothing. Jesus comes in the scene full time. When Jesus comes in the room, when the Holy Spirit comes in your situation, there's no way that situation can remain the same. This happened to Lazarus. When he was dead, Jesus appeared and the situation came back to life. This is the power of knowing what is happening around you. That situation is dead. But is the power of God present? What is sucking the power? Have you checked what is going on around you? The song that says, when you come in the room, everything changes. When the Holy Spirit comes in the room, he changes us. He causes us to go on our knees. We fall on Jesus' feet. We realize our wrongs. I love this song so much. It's only the Holy Spirit that can help you see 
what you can see with your natural eyes. After doing all that I've done, when you pray and nothing happens, and you have done all these things I've done, it's time to exert your faith on that one thing. This is very helpful. It's something that I do all the time. I can have a list or a number of prayer requests, but I'll choose one. If I have a pressing issue, I'll focus on that one because I know that I cannot spread my faith on too many things. And this is something that you can do. If you pray and nothing happens, exert your faith on one thing because faith is a force that will push that mountain away from your life. Command life to come into that situation. That's what Jesus said. He says, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come forth. You speak with your mouth and confess because the power of God lives in you. The Holy Spirit is upon you, is within you. And when you speak, you speak with power. So you command that situation to come back to life. Can these dry bones live again? Yes, they can. Can that situation turn around for your good? Yes, that situation can. I've seen this many times where people fast, maybe for three days, seven days, 21 days, you have done your prayer and fasting. And after that period of prayer and fasting, you find that it goes quiet. And quiet from praying as well. You become silent and you don't want to push anymore. After prayer and fasting, that's the time you should push. Push more on that prayer altar. Because when you were praying and fasting, God shifted things for your good in the realm of the spirit. And once you go quiet and you slow down, the enemy can take advantage of that vacuum. So when you finish your prayer and fasting, make sure that you continue to emphasize, you continue to push, you continue to press on until something happens, until that breakthrough is in your hands. You cannot stop praying. Pray without ceasing. And if you see that you pray and nothing happens, it's time to go back to your knees and check things out. Do not leave things to chance. Do not leave things to God alone. There is your part to play and that part is to search yourself, to examine yourself. Are things okay? Why is it that I'm not receiving? Why is it that my prayers are not answered? Is it because of my own doing? Is it because God is delaying my answer? Do I just wait on God's timing? When you see that everything is okay and nothing on your part that is sucking that energy, strength, that power from you, power on the prayer altar, then you know that God is working on your case and nothing else is hindering that blessing. You don't want anything to be blocking your blessing. So you stay on the prayer altar, continue pushing, continue praising, do all that you can. You do not stop praying. Thank God for that breakthrough in advance that he is working on your case and he cannot cut your expectation. Be expectant every single day. If it's not now, it's next minute. If it's not next minute, it can be tomorrow. And if not tomorrow, it's next week. God is not man to lie. He's not going to deny you any good thing. He answers on time. He's never early or late. So this is the encouraging word I brought today. I hope this has added more insight into what you already know. And I know that God is doing great things for you. You have to be patient because patience is the fruit of the Spirit. Those who are patient, they get permanent blessings. May the name of the Lord be glorified. May you be strengthened on that prayer altar, never to give up. I'm so blessed to have you in this family. If you haven't subscribed yet, take time to do so because you are being part of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Watch other videos that I recommend at the end of this video. Stay blessed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.